I started with the love of, of trucks as a really, really small kid. You know, I, my first time I ever got behind the wheel of a truck was when I was 11 years old. My uncle had me move his tanker truck from across a, a, a yard that was maybe about 100 yards across. So when the first time I put my key, put the key into the ignition and turned it, man, it's just one of those experiences you'll never forget. So I like to say that I've been in it since I was a kid, man. But as I matured and I got I uh, got the ability to acquire my CDL on my birthday when I turned 21 years old. I couldn't wait to get out there and, and run the open road. Uh, as I was going through school, man, everybody was like, you know, what is, you know, that whole, what do you want to be when you grow up thing? You know, you got doctors, you got lawyers, you got, you know, neurologists and all that stuff. I just wanted to be a truck driver. And, and then that kind of transitioned through as, as I got older, but that's kind of how it started for me. And then as we kind of went through, you know, I've, you know I, I, I love to look back at my history in trucking. I started off as a company driver. I progressed at, at the age of 23, became an my operator. And becoming an owner operator at that young age, I had some some pitfalls and some wins at the same time. And right at the year of 2016 is when I decided to say, you know what, it's time to really go all full fledged and really teach the people on how to do the right things in the business. It's treated like a business. You know, a lot of times that, you know, they get in as it and you, you know, I always tell people there's a difference between running a business and working for yourself. You know, and if a lot of times getting into the trucking industry, a lot of folks don't really take that piece seriously. And when you don't do that, you find yourself playing yourself out of a hole and digging yourself out of that hole. So it's really important to focus on the business principles in the beginning. And that's one of the biggest pieces of advice is because when you get good at business, everything else kind of plays itself in a realm. But a lot of times, man, we see a lot of folks just go out, buy trucks and, and really don't focus on the little intricacies that really uh, drive the business part of it. And that's one of the things that I say, if I look back at it and you know, anytime I have the opportunity to sit down and talk to somebody and say, hey, Adam, What's the number one thing you would recommend? Let's just focus on the business first. Establish the business first and then the truck will come. So I always, trucking to me is a big pendulum. No matter what direction it swings in one direction, it's gonna come right back and swing in the opposite direction. It's a cycle, just like anything else. You know, trucking is a, is, is a vital, critical part of the economy. It always has been a critical, crucial element of the economy since the, the days of covered wagon and horse and even further back before then. So. One thing I'll say is trucking isn't going anywhere. Trucking does pivot, right? So it goes in cycles. You know, you'll have cycles where contract market is doing very, very well. And you have cycles where the spot market is the place to be. When the spot market is not doing well, then obviously you want to focus on the relationships and the differentiators within your own business to help put yourselves in position to be on that contract market and have those long-term relationships that can help sustain your ability your business over the long term. So from a market perspective, what we're seeing is we're just seeing a swing. You know, we're seeing one of those constant swings that, you know, we've seen all, you know, all 22 years plus in my career, I've seen these, these cycles back and forth. And I really don't go one way or the other in terms of getting excited or, or getting too depressed over, you know, current conditions, because we all know that, you know, it always is going to swing back in the opposite direction. You know, and I get it. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit, I love that. I love the fact that you want to get out, you want to do your own thing, you want to, you know, chase the American dream, you want to provide yourself with a legacy. And I love all that. I think that's all great. But I think that one of the things that we've seen just in the last two years during the pandemic, we've seen you know, elevated rates that we in the industry have never seen before. And if you're just getting started in the business over the last two years, you didn't, weren't exposed to the fact that, you know, dry vans were running at $1.92 a mile. You know, you're exposed to a totally different, different, uh, different market. A lot of people weren't exposed to, you know, exposed to, to, to those different swings. And I think it's affecting a lot of folks. I do. I do see that. I see a lot of people that got in and they're buying, they're buying tractors, you know, double what they cost, you know, two years ago. So a lot of that kind of peppered in. But to your point, you got a lot of people that get into business and they really don't expect to see the the other side of the swing. They think it's everything is about, you know, hey, high rates and cheap diesel fuel. And it just doesn't work that way all the time. You got to have preparation. Yeah. I think it's systemically an issue from from operator to operator. You know, when I think about the CSA, this is us doing the same thing, expecting different results. Us getting out here saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, rates are killing us, rates are killing us. Okay, well, we're talking about, when they say rates are killing us, most of the time you're talking about spot rates. Well, the thing about it is if you continue to, you know, to, to, to hamper on the fact that the, the that rates are where they're at, and don't focus on the things that you can do from your side on the business side to impact those, whether you decide to pivot out into a contract space, whether you establish broker relationships where you have more direct freight, uh, you got to make sure that you pivot out of that because if not, you're just going to fall in and say, see the same. 
And when I think about the same as well, it's just not really not not adapting and embracing things that, that, that are happening. Automation is on its way. You know, that's one of the things that we see. We see truck automation is coming. Uh, also for that standpoint, I know there's some apprehensions to it, but unfortunately, it's just the way that things are going to go. How can you position yourself to be able to monetize that? How can you position yourself to be successful in those times? I look at diesel techs. You know, diesel techs now are going to be totally different than technicians 10 years from now. Being prepared to be able to work on, you know, automated tractors and being able to be able to diagnose those distant systems and being prepared to, to work on electric vehicles, things like that. Really got to make sure that we're evolving and constantly evolving as the industry evolves and don't sit in, you know, 2001 and 2002 mindsets because it's just not there anymore. You know, one of the things I can tell you about the industry itself, it's one of the slowest industries to adapt to change. You know, we think about it back in December of 2019 is when the ELD mandate went in place. 2019 is when the ELD mandate went in place three years ago. Airplanes have black boxes back in the 60s and the 70s and we were operating on autopilot back then. Yeah. So when we think about that and think about how much of a lagging indicator that we have to experience in the trucking industry, we know that there's a lot of things that are slow rolling in this particular industry and technology is one of those things. So I think the faster we can adapt and embrace technology and understand it, it's just, it's just it, it is what it is. And it's not going anywhere. How can we embrace it and how can we put it in our business and how can we be able to use it and leverage it for us to be able to get a leg up? The biggest thing is compliance. You know, a lot of times they, they, they get out, there's no real good manual out there on how to, you know, there's no trucking one-on-one classes. You can find a lot of things on the internet that uh, quite frankly are either antiquated from a, a data perspective or really just not, not 100% accurate. So you find a lot of times that compliance from the beginning, the way you establish yourself at a, as a company from the beginning is very important. So we find a lot of people that need assistance in that realm, you know, from a standpoint of safety, understanding as a small carrier what that looks like. Everything from the new entrance safety audit to just an overall safety review, what that looks like. And then profitability, you know, how do I make money in this business? You know, a lot of times, you know, I think it's all about, you know, just driver and fuel and that's it. There's so many other components that are involved in your, your profitability matrix to really understand what your bottom line P&L needs to be every single month. And again, it's just really understand that you got to run this like a business, regardless if you got one truck or if you got a hundred trucks. And I always tell people from a, a process standpoint, if you have processes and systems and you got things in place, you can have a hundred trucks and it feels like you're running, running one. But if you don't, one truck can make you feel like you're running a hundred. So it's so important to understand how important having processes and systems in place and really treat it like a business. If you do that, it'll be a lot easier transition to go from whether you're just an operator to an owner operator, or if you're just, just a, you know, hey, I'm just, you know, a beautician that's wanting to be a truck investor and put a truck driver behind the wheel of my investment. Cat and mouse game between brokers and drivers. The cat and mouse game, I'm, I'm so, it's so old, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it, I feel like it's generationally passed down the lack of trust on both sides. You know, I think that you have brokers and drivers or brokers and owner operators, they're all people. Every, at the end of the day, you're a person, you know, and, and I think to bucket all brokers into one bucket is wrong. Just like I think the bucket all carriers or all owner operators into a bucket is wrong. I think the thing is that as we go forward, we got to look at it more from a relationship standpoint. We got to create better relationships and we've got to move forward because I tell you, as a small carrier, you know, there's some value that a broker can bring to the table that can really sustain your business or set your business up for the long haul. If you establish the right relationships, if they understand exactly where you want to go with your business and if there's fairness all the way across the board. And it's the same thing for a broker with a carrier. When you have a carrier and you establish a great relationship with a carrier, that carrier can service your customer and provide you with a better relationship with your customer to have even more links. So at the end of the day, you got to work together. But I'm, I'm I, you know, if I could just be just just Frank Russell, I'm just I'm, I'm tired of the cat and mouse. It's old. Um, it's an old way of thought. I think that, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of the stuff when we talk about having transparency on both sides, some of that stuff's not even substantiated. Uh, at the end of the day, we just need to work to build better relationships and understand that without these relationships, we're going to forever be at a standstill. We're going to forever be at a halt. I think that there's some things that both sides can do to improve, you know, from a broker standpoint, there's definitely some steps ahead to have better relationships with your carriers and drivers. And I think as carriers and drivers, there's better side on things on that side that needs to be needs to happen as well. I think that's the one thing, if I could just have a crystal ball or if I can just, you know, drop an ingredient into the gumbo and make it taste really good, it's just to improve the relationship from brokers and, and carriers. Because at the end of the day, 
We're here to do one thing, and that's to provide service across the United States and move freight. And without each other, it, won't, it, just, it just won't happen. There's a couple of ways you can connect. You know, you connect with me on, on LinkedIn at Adam Wingfield. Um, you can reach our company on Instagram at Innovative Logistics Group. And you can also find us on Facebook at Innovative Logistics Group as well. Or just go to our website, www.thetruckingconsultants.com.